They have become one of these stories of these Winter Olympic Games. The man who allowed it to happen, the man who has become Canada's 10th silver medalist. Take me through these last few hours of your life. Oh, it's been, uh, it's been surprising. I mean, I haven't been on the World Cup podium now in uh, a couple of seasons. Uh, coming back from the leg break and everything, I consider myself a long shot and uh, sort of a, a dark horse. But uh, having this opportunity come from Gilmore sort of as a surprise in the first place and then getting the medal out of it, uh, it's, uh, it's been a bit of a fairy tale. How did that conversation go? It was uh, through text message, actually, and he had a Russian number, so I didn't know it was him. And, uh, he did just you think it was legit? I didn't think it was legit right <laughs> off the bat, so I had to go find him in person and uh, get, him, get him to tell me uh, straight from his own mouth. Your parents are here. You have two siblings here. You compete in the 500. How do you come to this decision? Um, I think uh, just the kind of the, my coaches and sport director kind of came to me and um, they kind of, it was a tough question for them to ask and um, they kind of said, would you give your spot to Danny? And it was about 20 minutes of, you know, discussion with them. Um, but ultimately, you know, we're here to win medals and uh, Danny was one of our best skaters and he would have been here had it not fallen at the trial. So uh, it was kind of a no-brainer to put our you know, best ponies on the ice and I'm glad it worked out. You say it's a no-brainer, but this is an individual sport. A lot of Canadians don't understand how you would choose your teammate and country over yourself. Uh, you know, everyone sees the individual parts, but for the past four years I've been training with Danny. And, um, you know, when I joined the team I was some short tracker kid that kind of came over and uh, didn't really know much about long track. And he really helped me you know, get to this point. And, um, you know, I owe a lot to him, so this is kind of me paying him back, I guess. <laughs> Because you went through hell and back in short track, too, yeah. with some pretty severe injuries. Yeah, I had two fractured vertebrae in my last season junior, and you know I was uh, fortunate to make the world junior team in long track that season, which got me on the development team and got me training with Denny, and you know, I guess it's a pretty good combination. <laughs> what can you tell us about this kid that so many Canadians don't know? Well, I just hope that Canadians don't think this is the only uh, really humble thing he's ever done in his life. He's... Uh, the most Canadian person I know, let's just put it that way. He's uh, the humblest guy I know. And uh, What do you mean by that? How just, Canadian is he? Just a great teammate. I don't know. Uh, for instance, well, this example, it's sort of unprecedented that any athlete's ever given up their Olympic birth, or their Olympic spot to another athlete, even a teammate. And uh, to do that is pretty amazing. I think the best way to repay him is to do another unprecedented act, which would be to make him, as a non-medalist, uh, the flag bearer for the closing ceremonies. I saw you tweeted that <laughs> earlier. What do you think? Oh, it'd definitely be a huge honor, but there's still a lot of Olympics to go and a lot of great Canadian stories to tell, and um, I'd definitely be honored, and uh, you know, we'll see what Canada has in store, but you know, for sure there's some great athletes uh, out there that still have to tell their story. Before we wrap, i got to ask you the question. This was about redemption in the 1,000. This is now three Olympics and three medals. What does this mean to you in your resume? Um, I guess for me it's been that uh, elusive individual medal that I've been missing and uh, after not having good individual races in any of my 1,000 or 1,500 meters in the last two Olympics, uh, to have this opportunity and for it to happen this way, it's, uh, it's mind-blowing. I, I am still in disbelief. I'm going to wake up any moment here and it's all going to have to not be true or something. Guess what? It's a reality. Congratulations. Fellas, thanks. Yep.